Hello guys. <coughs> so um, we are going to start off uh, uh, um, our lecture with the maximum principle. So I'll be doing a couple of videos. Uh, they, they are going to be short videos, like 10 minutes thereabouts, um, so that the file sizes are not too large. Okay. So I'm going to start with something that we've already covered in class, um, and then we'll move on to uh, newer stuff. Okay, there are exercises within um, the slides. So you get the slides, uh, you get, you have the lecture notes. Um, I'll send you some typed ones as well. So combining the lectures, lecture notes, the slides, and the videos uh, should help you uh, with understanding the material. And if you have any questions, of course you can, um, you can let me know. Okay, so I'll give an introduction, we'll go on to the maximum principle for the continuous problem, which we have done in class. So I'll go through quickly this one. And then we'll move on to the numerical problem, which we haven't done yet. Um, and then maybe in a, another video, I will tackle the general boundary conditions. Okay? And then some exercises. Um, so we said that a well posed uh, problem, PDE problem, is one that um, in which the solution exists. Uh, the solution is unique, and then the solution depends continuously on the initial and the boundary data. Okay. Um, now, the importance of, of the maximum principle is that you can actually use it to prove these first two uh, properties: uh, uniqueness as well as continuous dependence on um, data. All right. That is why this is important. Um, so we used this example to um, to prove the uh, maximum principle for a continuous problem, which is given by this. So this is a model problem. You have the initial condition, you have the left boundary condition, you have the right boundary condition. Uh, we are assuming that uh, f, g, l, g, r are continuous functions, and that at the corners, um, the initial and the boundary conditions are consistent for continuity. All right. Then, um, the heat equation has a unique solution, uh, U, which is continuous uh, within the domain. Uh, and it fulfills the maximum principle, which is given by this. So this is given this continuous problem uh, with these conditions. Then the value of U must satisfy this. In other words, the maximum value of U, okay, for X between zero and one, cannot be greater than the, what you have um, along the boundaries and then what you have initially, okay? So the maximum um, should occur um, initially or should occur at the boundaries, which makes physical sense as well, okay? So that is a continuous problem. How do you, um, how do you use this to prove properties two and three of uniqueness and continuous dependence on data? So to show this, we, we said that assume you have two solutions, U1 and U2 here, be solutions of the heat equation uh, with initial and boundary data given by this. So the ones correspond to U1, and then this data corresponds to U2, okay? And then we said that you can consider um, these relations, which is basically a difference between these uh, quantities, right? So W is the difference between the two solutions. Uh, phi here is the difference between the two initial conditions, the difference in the left and then the difference in the right boundary conditions. Um, if you take the derivative of this uh, equation here, you are going to have W substrate T is U of T at one minus this. Of course, uh, U of T is a solution to the uh, model problem, so it is UXX, and then UT at two will be USX at two. Okay, but this is the same as the derivative of this um, xx twice. Okay, find um, twice the derivative of w with respect to x and you get this. Which, which shows that w here is the solution to the heat equation uh, with the initial data given by this difference quantities. That is this. So w has initial uh, left boundary, right boundary conditions given by this. Okay. So, so yeah, we have uh, we have seen this. Good. 
Now, if W is a solution to the heat equation, then uh, it, it must satisfy the uh, maximum principle, uh, which is given by this. So, in the maximum principle, just re replace um, the solution U with our W, replace the initial and boundary conditions by uh, our new ones, which is phi, gamma L, and gamma R. Okay? Good. So, from, from this, we, we are going to uh, from this is easy to show uniqueness as well as dependence on um, initial and boundary data. How do we show uh, uniqueness? Now, if you take two solutions, right? If you take two solutions of uh, with the same initial and boundary data, okay, then phi gamma l and gamma l will go to zero, right? Note that these quantities are the difference. Uh, their difference. Okay, so if you have um, uh, two solutions but they have the same initial data, then phi will be zero because this will be equal to that, this will be equal to that. So these are zeros. Uh, so if I plug the zeros in here, this will be zero. Okay, this will be zero, that is zero. This says that W cannot be greater than uh, zero. Of course, W, w cannot be negative, therefore, W has to be equal to zero. If W is equal to zero, it implies that U1 is equal to U2. And so that proves uniqueness, okay? Uniqueness um, of, of, the, um, of the solution. So you can use the maximum principle to, um, to prove property two of uniqueness. Of course, it also shows continuous dependence on the data, right? At each point, um, the solution will depend on these guys. Um, the maximum value of this at each time will depend on the values at the, at the um, initial and then the boundaries. Okay, so that also proves property three, which is often referred to as the stability of the differential equation. So, um, to prove the stability of uh, the differential equation, you could also use the maximum principle to show it. If you just have to show uh, that property three holds. Okay, so that is the continuous problem which we have done in class. Uh, question is how do we move from here to the uh, numerical problem? So if the maximum principle holds for continuous problem that uh, you have set up, uh, you make sure that the maximum principle also holds for your numerical problem that you set up. If the maximum principle uh, is not satisfied, then there's a problem with your setup uh, or your coding. Okay. So you make sure it also is also uh, satisfied. So we, we are going to use a theta method to um, to generalize the maximum principle. Okay, in the case of the numerical problem. So this is how it is uh, set up as a theorem that the theta method is given by this. We have seen this before. Where theta lies between zero and one, the mu into one minus theta must be less than or equal to one half, and this yields. Um, uh, a solution and that solution must satisfy this you must lie between the minimum and the maximum the minimum here is the minimum that is attained uh, either initially or the boundaries and the maximum is the maximum that is attained at the boundaries or at the uh, initial time okay so this is this is the equivalent of the maximum principle for the numerical problem so how do we prove this? So um, to prove it, um, it's important to note this, that the coefficients here of the theta uh, method, the coefficients are not negative because this is, lies between, theta lies between zero and one, and this quantity, uh, this relation holds. This guy is not negative, not negative, not negative. That is important for the proof so take note of that so they are non-negative now suppose that this is where the proof comes suppose that u attains its maximum value at an internal point not at a boundary but an internal point and this maximum is given by this so that is the right point here okay and now we can let u star be equal to the maximum of the rest of the uh, points okay on the stencil okay this is the stencil for the theta method so you start.